Okay. Let's talk about some of the strategies that young sellers can employ when they're, you know, faced with uh, trying to convert these uh, B2, uh, yeah, more experienced buyers. And you, you spoke about it in both your book and then in the Harvard Business Review article that you did on this topic. And mm -hmm. that's where I've drawn some of these questions from, because I'm really interested mm -hmm. about those, the three key steps that you followed. Can you walk me through those? For sure. Yeah. So the first thing is they talk about is they say, know, know your pain points, know their pain points. And I'll, I'll tell you, like, I actually have a, a, interestingly, a client of mine, here's a great story, a client of mine in Vancouver, B2B tech company. And, you know, what they did, they use this tactic I refer to as assumptive priming, which is when we get into a discovery call with our customers, we want to show them, number one, we want to show them that we know their business and we know the pains that people like them typically have. We also want to get them to open up. Because one of the challenges that young people have is that if the older, more experienced buyer is thinking to themselves, who the hell is this kid or what are they going to teach me? I'm going to be very reluctant to open up about the inner workings of my business and, and you know, the, in science of self-disclosure. So the idea is if I can know your pain points based, based on what I know of you, your role, your industry, maybe, for example, the system that you're using today to achieve that task, I can come back with one, two, or three of like the top things that, you know, we hear consistently from our clients around those challenges. So the number one thing is I say like, know their pain points. Cause if you come in and start rattling off the pains and challenges, the person's gonna perk up and say, oh, you know what? Like this, this person actually knows what the hell I do every day. So study your customers and know what they think about. That's my first point. Okay, awesome. So first of all, know their pain, which means you've got to be doing your research both on the company, on the industry, on the persona, all of that stuff to, yeah, to, to prove that you aren't just one of these inexperienced kids. Like you've got a sense of what's going on. Even if you haven't lived it yourself, you've found a way to kind of gather some of that experience. What's the next step in kind of, yeah. Well, I realized I didn't finish that story. So my oh, B2B tech client gosh. in Vancouver. So what they do, so what they actually hire, you, you know, young kids, like basically out of school, you know, I remember training their team and I, I remember asking a rep and you said, what, what was your last sales job? And she said, well, I worked at Aritzia at the mall. Right? right. And so they try to bring in these young, enthusiastic kids and talk about something that they have never, like a, a particular kind of software that they've never dealt with before. And they said they actually focused on this assumptive priming tactic, which is coming into the conversation with pain points, not generic pain points, but pain points that are based on what I know about you so far. Mm -hmm. And they were able, they told me that they were able to get the ramp time. So they were getting four month tenured conversion rates out of reps that had been there for three weeks, just by focusing on this assumptive priming tactic. So anyways, that's, I want to complete the story. That's the first thing. Yeah. The second thing I talk about is this idea of invoking the credibility of others. So like, unless you're like Oprah, like no one cares what you think, right? When, when you come to me and you say, well, you know, well, well, what I've seen and what I've heard, I'm like, who the hell are you, right? Like I'm, I'm being facetious here, but you know, we aren't sometimes able to manifest that level of personal credibility. So what I challenge people to do is I say, like, think about if you're having a conversation with a, with a customer, who has credibility? Like if you're trying to bring these arguments, who in your world has credibility? Well, your customers have credibility. They're, you know, they've used your solution to get value. Um, the collective experience of your organization, maybe you've been in business for five years, three years, 10 years, right? Um, uh, third party resources, studies, articles in Harvard Business, books, these kinds of things, they have credibility. So what you want to do is you want to shift what I what I refer to as the eye phrasing trap. So the eye phrasing trap is when I come in and I say, well, what I've seen, what I think, what I found, I'm like no one cares what you think. Okay. So you switch it to we phrasing. So what we've seen, what we found, what our customers have noticed is what a recent study in Harvard Business showed was that. Those things have credibility, way more credibility than you, or even, you know, uh, if you're talking about your founder, well, you know, look, our founder realized five years ago, there was a huge gap in the market. And so now these are stories where I'm not manifesting any of my own conviction. I am borrowing conviction from things that actually have it and deserve it and invoking it in my speech. And the nice thing is like, I can do that on day one of my job. I don't, I could do that. I don't have to do that. Uh, you know, I, I could have this stuff written down for me. You know, we can encapsulate the stories. We phrase and you can use it on day one. And so that's that's the second thing is just remember who has the credibility yeah. and invoke their credibility instead of yours. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. We've all got uh, experienced people, whether it's on our teams, yeah, founders in an industry uh, where we're well known. Absolutely. There's tons of places to draw that credibility if you don't have it yourself. Okay, what's next? Yeah. And so the, the last thing, I mean, there's certainly more, but the last thing I talk about is this idea of just presenting arguments with 
conviction. And this goes back to what we talked about at the beginning, which is like, I can tell, like, if you believe, you know, when I'm, you know, a really good book, it's a, it's a quick read called Talk Like Ted. And it talks about like the secrets of like the best Ted talkers. And, and they t- it talked about the fact there's a fellow they referenced in the, in the book, Morgan Wright, who was an 18 year veteran of law enforcement, who did this experiment and basically like took people off the street and showed them like uh, 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 interrogation footage of, of suspected criminals being questioned. And they asked them like, did this person do it? You think they did it, right? And they were and they were able to find with like startling accuracy, like random people off the street were able to identify when the bad guy or gal like did it, right? Mm-hmm. And so people can tell if you don't believe in what you're selling, if you don't have that conviction, people can tell like the same way I can tell with my kids. And so, but the problem is that the things that we do are normal things that no one cares about. Oh, we're middleware, we're accounting software, like who cares, right? So what we do is instead of talking about the nuts and bolts and features and benefits, and oftentimes we'd be like, oh, we're, did you know we're a platform? And what we do is we specialize, like no one cares about your stupid platform. So what we talk about is this idea of like leading with what you believe. Like what is what is the mission? Like why do you, you know, back to the Simon Sinek start with why, like, why do you do what you do? Why does your business, you know, in business in the first place? And the nice thing is, and especially for a lot of startups, like your product will change. Your product may not be even fully baked. And that means that your customers may have some challenges with it, right? And, and you want them to give you like lots of chances and be on this journey with you. And while your product may change over time, one thing that hopefully doesn't change is your mission, like is your why. That will always hopefully stay consistent. And so this idea of leading with what you believe, if you want to manifest authentic conviction, then you need to anchor your feelings on some kind of, you know, like an emotional anchor, if you will, around what it is that you do. So for example, like if you ask me, so like, so you ask me like, so David, what do you do at Cerebral Selling? I could say, oh, I wrote a book and I do training and I do all these, like, but I might say, you know what, look, I, I believe sales is the best profession in the world. And I, I believe there's a lot of bad salespeople out there who are not bad people. They're not bad people. They're good people. They're just going out there and they're just executing these old school tactics. And I believe if you want to be at the top of the sales game in the modern era, you need to use tactics that are rooted in science and empathy. That's what I believe. And nowhere in that narrative, that's all true. Nowhere in that narrative that I talk about what I do. I didn't talk about any features or benefits or platforms or anything like that. I led with I with what I believe and hopefully you can feel like the authenticity in that. And so that's my my last piece of advice is like if you're new to the sales game or new to your company, get accustomed to like your mission. And the beauty of this tactic is that when you lead with that mission, it will naturally invoke these feelings and you will naturally attract customers who align with that vision. Mm-hmm. irrespective of whatever the features and the platform and whatever it is that is, right? So uh, manifesting those feelings of conviction and getting the customers that align with your with you, with that mission and what it is you can do to help them is super powerful. So that's why I say like, you know, lead with what you believe. 